church. We're just going to go before the Lord in prayer as we open this service that God would have his way in this place, that he would have his hand over our worship team, that he would lead them in the spirit, that he would have his way hand over our ministers on the platform and over our pastor as they bring forth whatever word that God has given them today and that he would open us up to receive it. In Jesus' holy name, I pray right now that your spirit move in this place in a powerful way. I pray that whatever distractions were brought in this place, I pray that you bind them right now so that they can't distract us from focusing on you. I pray that you have your hand over our worship team, that you use them in a mighty way. Use our ministers on the platform and use our pastors to place for the word and open us up to receive it and loose your spirit in this place. In Jesus' holy name. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, there is power in the name of Jesus.
We're setting them as well as ourselves as souls to be saved. Souls to be saved. Praise God. So let's continue to pray for them. Pray for our nation and the leaders there. And uh, we have a prayer request from, uh, from Brother Keith. His brother uh, is uh, getting ready to go. Uh, he has heart failure and kidney failure and is uh, being uh, being admitted into the Kinsman Hospital in Kin oh, Kingsman, Kings Kingman, Kingman Hospital in Arizona. In Arizona. So let's keep Gerald, is that, is that right? Let's keep Gerald Scott in our prayers. The Lord knows how to answer prayers. Let's continue to pray for revival in our county. And uh, we want to play an intricate part in that revival. That's the will of God for you and I. And praise God. And uh, new souls that will be added to the harvest. That's God's will also. That's God's will also. So very good to see you. Uh, I think Sister Evelyn, Sister Evelyn was, um, was it Sister, Sister Evelyn, you weren't with us last week, were you? Oh, maybe, see, I get, I get you two mixed up. I'm sorry, you were, you were. It's Sister Donna. <laughs> Sister Evelyn was here, and Sister Donna was not, but Sister Donna is here today, so thank God for, for answering prayer. Thank God for her. Let's continue to remember our, uh, the pillars of this church. Can uh, keep Brother uh, Elder uh, Jimmy and Sister June Ruth in our prayers. And the Lord knows how to deal uh, with all of us. Let's pray. Lord, your God, and beside you there is no other. We thank you for this opportunity to look into the perfect law of liberty. We thank you for the freedom that we have in Christ Jesus. Thank you for that precious blood, the blood of the Lord that cleanses us from all of our sins. Lord, we plead your blood over our bodies over our minds, over our spirits, over every aspect of our lives. Bless us this day. Help us to lift you up. Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray for our county. We pray for this congregation as well as all those that are yours that we will be found in the center of your perfect will. Save, Lord. Save. That is your will, Lord. Save for your great name's sake. Bless us today. Let your word come forth. Anoint the speaker. Lord, let our ears be open and our hearts receptive to that which you have for the body of Christ. We ask this and all things in Jesus' name. Everyone say in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Sister Chantel is going to come forth. She has some very neat things to, to do and to present. Lord, everybody. So the Bible says to give honor where honor is due, and today there is someone who is deserving of a little extra honor. Um, for those of you who don't know, yesterday was Sister Laura's birthday.
doing something for the Lord or giving of myself to my children or my family. But um, thank you for making us feel at home here. Um, you welcomed us with open arms and made us feel a part of this church right away. And we love you for that. And we do feel like this is our second home. So thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Amen. Can we stand to our feet as we continue to worship this afternoon? Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Because you gives me strength. Nothing is impossible. Through you, I got to open. Troubles are broken.
afternoon's tithes and offerings. This is the first Sunday of the month. This is Mission Sunday. We're going to remember those that God called, wherever, halfway around the world, wherever He called them, and just trusted in God, obeyed the voice of God, and stood on the promise of God that He would provide. Amen? And God does that through the local churches and through our giving. So we're going to lift our hand. We're going to ask to lay in our hearts to stay what He wants us to give. We're going to remember our offer in our local church, and we're going to remember those missionaries, those who walked away from careers and families and just obeyed the voice of God. And we're so thankful for them. You know, Asheville County is our mission field, okay? But I get to sleep in my bed tonight. I'm not, I'm not in some grass hut with no running water and, and facing who knows what, but there are those, are, are those out there that are facing that. And we better remember them. This is God's way of providing for them. So let's lift our hand and ask the Lord, lay in our hearts what he wants us to give. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day, Lord, and your presence that we feel. Lord, may we never take it for granted, Lord, be in your house, Lord, and be in your presence. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for those missionaries, Lord, that you called halfway around the world. Lord, we know, Lord Jesus, Lord, that, that we don't need your money, but you know the things of this world cost money, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, to lay in our hearts this day what you want us to give, Lord. May we remember those missionaries, Lord, that was obedient to your voice, Lord. Lay on our hearts this day what you want us to give. May we trust in you and step out in faith. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. You can come and march, Brother Brad's in the back with your electronic. hands and ask the Lord's blessing on this offering. Lord Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, once again for this day, Lord, in your presence that we feel. Lord, we lift up this offering to you. We ask you to bless it, Lord. Multiply it, Lord, like the fishes in the waters. Lord, we know we can never repay you for all you've done, Lord. Calvary Hill, Lord, where you brought each and every one of us from, Lord, we just want to be obedient to your voice, Lord. We want to trust in you. We want to step out in faith. Lord, we can never repay you, Lord. We're just thankful, Lord, to be able to give back to the kingdom of God. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. He is jealous for me. He loves like a hurricane. I am a tree.
<laughs> it would be passionate. Passionate. Uh, I'm talking about Brother Jerry. He is passionate for the gospel of Christ. And I appreciate that. Everyone say God bless Brother Jerry. Thank you, Lord. Stand, there shall not be dew 
nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, which is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the raven to feed thee there. So he went, and he did according to, according to unto the word of the Lord, and for he went, and he dwelt by the brook, brook Cherith, that is, before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had not been no rain in the land. Because there had been no rain in the land. I'd like to preach to you on this topic, dancing in the rain. And the drone's going to pray for us. Lord, we pray right now that you would just use Pastor today, God, to preach the word that you've given them. Lord, that we've come and get ready to just take this word in God and apply it to our life, Jesus. We thank you for the time of worship that we had. Lord, we pray, God, Lord, that you would just dig in right now, Lord, and just put that word and part of it into our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated if you're standing. God bless you. I don't know about you, but... Uh, it looks like it's a beautiful day outside. And I drove in, had the windows down, and I said, thank you, Lord, for the sunshine. Amen. Now, I, I thank God always whenever it's a beautiful, sunny day, because I don't know about you, but I love the sunshine. Yes. Amen. I know the sunshine has um, effects on our health. It's just a reality. It offers certain vitamins in your body. Um, and there's something about summertime when it comes that you look forward to, which is those beautiful sunny days. Amen. The problem is, especially in Ohio, you know all too well that every day is not going to be a sunny day. And the fact of the matter is, sunshine does affect our moods. Now, I have not looked into any scientific reasons on why it affects our moods. So I can tell you for myself, when uh, the sun is shining, I just feel happier. It's just uh, bad. You know, it's, I don't know. It's just, and when, the, when it's cloudy outside, you just kind of feel like, blah, you know, it's just a cloudy day. Not desirable, that's for certain. And I certainly don't mind the rain. But when it rains too much, it gets irritating, especially when you have a lot of property and it just becomes a sopping mess. And double, especially when you have two German shepherds, and every time they go outside, they're a sopping, muddy, filthy, disgusting mess. And, and it's almost impossible to get them completely clean. And so um, it, it, it just leads me to the conclusion that if I had my way, it'd be sunny all the time. Actually, not all the time, but if I had my way, I'd say, okay, God, here's what I would like. I want seven days of sunshine, and then one day of rain, and then I want another seven days of sunshine, yeah. and then one more day of rain. Yeah. That'll keep everything just kind of the way I want it, and, uh, and I'd just be happy, especially, especially in the summertime when you're trying to enjoy the time with your family. You ever go on a vacation, and you plan for nice weather, and it's just rainy the whole time? Tell me that's not frustrating. Not only is it frustrating, by the time you get done, you even wonder if you're saved. At least me, I do it like good. <laughs> you know, it ruins the whole attitude. It ruins the whole trip sometimes. Because there's something about the nice weather that it makes your vacations a little more, or your trips a little more enjoyable. Elijah, uh, I don't know if he really... If he really thought it through when he prayed for the the, 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 the the rain to be shut up for three and a half years. Because, as we can see, God sent him over by the brook, Cherith, which was a place where God knew that Elijah would be able to find water in this drought. And it probably, more than likely, was also a place where he would be able to hide a little bit from an angry Ahab after a month of no rain. He can be pretty mad. They might be looking for him. And then after two months and three months, and and, 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 and as California knows, when, when those droughts really drag out, it has an effect on everything. It has an effect on your crops. It has an effect on your livestock. If you ever like to watch some of the wild nature videos that, like I do, there are some places, 
and around the world that they'll go they'll go an entire season without rain and before it's all said and done these massive watering holes of the hippos and the lions and, the, and all these animals go down to drinking before it's all done it's this little this little mud hole that they're trying to stay cool in because they have gone so long with this drought and so three and a half years uh, no rain and God sends Elijah down by this brook and it's there that God provides for Elijah over this time that I have no clue exactly where he slept while he was there if he made a little makeshift house or what but we know it, it wasn't really pleasant because as much as I love sunshine when you go a long time and there's no rain it starts to kill some things and you start to feel a little fatigued and you ever work out in the sun and you work out in that heat all day and then it, it, it messes with your body. You see, the thing that we love, too much of it can have a negative effect as well. And so Elijah prays for this rain and then in three and a half years, according to his word, now the Bible says not only did it rain, but there was an abundance of rain. Now, if you know anything about droughts, when you go so long with nothing but dry, 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 it makes the ground like concrete. And so when it finally rains, everything floods. You know, it, the, the ground doesn't just soak it up and absorb it because it's so hard. And so then it causes problems. They went from three and a half years with nothing as far as rain goes to torrential downpours and floods. There wasn't a happy median. It wasn't like God sent a little bit of rain in here just to get the ground a little moist and maybe start the brooks from running again. Because after a season, what happens here? The Bible says that after a while, it says the brook had dried up because there was no rain. And so now Elijah becomes a byproduct or collateral damage of his own prayers. Now that's why I say when he prayed that prayer, I'm not fully certain that he thought it all the way through. Because if it was me, I'd say, God, don't let it rain on me for the heathen. Let it all, but for me, if you could just give me one little cloud above my house and let me, I'm the man of God by, by Lord. I mean, just help me out a little bit. And, and that's what I do. I would pray that prayer. I know you think I'm bad, but that's what the prayer I pray. But he didn't do that. And he now becomes a recipient of his own prayers. But when those three and a half years ended and the rain finally comes, what happens? It now becomes torrential downpours. The Bible says there's going to be an abundance of rain. An abundance of rain. Now, let's go back for a moment. If you don't mind, let me just kind of talk for a couple minutes this morning. Because I want to talk to you about the sunshine just for a minute. I already rant, rattled on about how much I enjoy the sunshine. I, 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 you probably feel the same way. Um, and I found, I found something over the last several years that, that, that bothers me. One, there seems to be a, an exodus of people from places like ours into warmer climates, like Florida or North and South Carolina. Places where the sun shines a little more than it does in Ohio. People are just, they're yearning and they're longing for those specific types of climates. I had a man years ago, he said, Rev, why don't you go start a church in South Carolina? I said, very easy, because God hasn't told me to. Would I like to go start a church in South Carolina? I would love to. I said, I'd love to be in a nicer climate, but that's not where God sent me. He sent me here, so i got to deal with it, and, and, and I'll still feel sorry for the people in Alaska. You see, there's always, there's always some good to everything if you just look for it. But I, I, I do believe, though, I do believe, and, I, and another trend that I've noticed, and, and, and it's okay if I just talk, if I bore you, you know, just whisper a prayer and say, God, help him to shut up real fast. And, um, you know, I probably will today anyway. It seems no matter how, how depressed our economy may or may not be, there is no lack of spending anymore. And, and, and more and more people are going on vacations, and that's good. But I'm not talking about little vacations. I'm talking about big vacations. The cruise industry is seeing an average of one to two million new people cruising every year. Every year. Now, cruises aren't cheap if you've never went on a cruise. They're a lot of money. 
And you can get some cheap cruises, and but if you got a family, you can just forget it. You might as well plan on forking over four thousand dollars next just to get yourself started. It's, but people still pay it. People will still pay to fly, and we all we'll lock ourselves up in our house. We'll still get on an airplane. You know why? Because we want to get where we got to go. We want to get to those warmer climates. We want to get out of Dodge, as they would say. And the the point that I'm making is, to me, it appears. As our, as our society becomes more and more dysfunctional and broken, people are seeking that the sunshine, if you please, and, and sometimes that's literal and sometimes that's metaphorical, in their life something to brighten up their day, if you please, something to make them feel good. You can't go to Walmart and buy a TV, they're all gone. My God, the stimulus checks come out, Walmart runs out of TVs. It's almost like you think he, a TV was the Holy Ghost and everybody's going and buying it. They're like, Simon, I'm going to buy that thing you plug in you get the power from. It, 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 you come out with a new video game console and there's no, there, there is a shortage. You can't get them. You've got to line up. People were paying thousands of dollars for a video game console. Why? Because they want the latest, greatest. It isn't a coveting issue and it is biblical, but that's, that's another story. People are looking for something to bring some type of relief and release into their life. Now, in Ohio, we enjoy the summertime, and it seems like we don't become so crazy in the summer because we can get out, and we can move, and we can go down to the beach, and we can do a few things. There's something about that, that, that sunshine, that beautiful weather that does temporarily alleviate the frustration of life. But the fact is, unless you're living in a bubble, people are, the people are standing on the, edge of, on the edge, and many of them are jumping. They literally are. Because people need something, and I think they turn to materialism, and in, 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 in a literal sense, they turn to something like the sunshine. Here's an example. Florida has 131 million tourists each year. 131 million. You know how many Alaska has? 2.2 million. Why? Because if you think Alaska, all you think is cold. I don't want to go to Alaska. I know, I've heard people say an Alaskan cruise is beautiful and that's great maybe one day, but I'd rather go where the sunshine is because I live in Ohio. I'd rather go lay out on the beach and, and, and work on my beach body and... and <laughs> I'm doing that. It's like, we know that's a joke. I want to go where it's nice, 131. Do you know how many tourists Russia sees in the wintertime? Five million. Florida gets... I don't know what that is, 60, 70 times what Russia is in their winter season. Because nobody wants to go where it's cold. We don't want to be cold. We want to be warm. We want to enjoy the sun. And part of that is, is literally because of our climate, not, not, not the temperature. I'm talking about our spiritual climate in society. People are flocking to places where they think they'll feel happy because it's a warmer climate, because the sun is shining more. In 2017, 127 million people got on a cruise ship. That number rose by 3 million by 2019, and they anticipate to continually climb. They are building cruise ships that are bigger, they're bigger than cities. Ships that hold four and 5,000 passengers. When you add your crew in there, you're talking a couple thousand crew members. Well, how in the world can you do that? Because people will pay any amount of money for happiness. At least what they perceive to be happiness. Over 8 million people visit Mexico each year. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'd, I'd love to go to Mexico and see the Mayan ruins, but I'm afraid of dying the moment I set up step across the border. Do you know Mexico? Do you know they have over, over double the amount of murders that we have in the entire United States? They have a, a population of 126 million people. We've got about 326 million people, and we have about 16,000 murders a year. They've got almost 35,000 murders every year. Now, i got a question for you. Why is 8 million people going to Mexico? Why? Because they think it's nice. It's warm in Mexico. And there are things that they can see. And it probably is. It's a warm climate. But 
It's not a stable climate, but people don't care because people will go to any lengths to try and find peace and contentment and enjoyment in life. Are you with me so far? How about lost a long time ago? Travel guys offer 30 destinations where it's summer all the time. That's the way it lists it. 30 destinations where it's summer all the time because that's what people are looking for. People are looking for the sunshine. They're looking for the nice, warm climate. I would, I would bet you that when Elijah first prayed that prayer and they went a couple weeks without rain, they probably enjoyed it. They probably liked it. Beautiful weather. You know, they got their, they, they're taking their Egyptian robes down to the beach and they're out there sunbathing and they're suntanning. I don't know if you can suntan back then, but you, you got my point. And, but after a while, so long of that, it's like, uh, this isn't really good. Now, I'm trying to get a point across to you. We've got to be very careful because there are certain things that move us and motivate us. And the church has got to be careful that we don't get caught in the same traps as the world. We've got to be careful that, that we're not looking to materialism or we're not looking to destinations for contentment in our spirit and peace in our mind. We've got to understand those things cannot be purchased. You can't go away to Florida and say, boy, I, I, I want to move to Florida. Why? Because you're, all you're thinking about is the sunshine and the nice weather. I can't tell you how many people say those things to me because there's something in our soul that is longing. And I, 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 I feel like this text that we read, I feel like it's, it's reminiscent of how we as children of God live our lives. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, this, it's this array, vast array of, of sunshine, and then on the other hand, it's torrential downpours. It just seems to be no happy medium. There seems to be no, midi, no middle ground, and that can really affect us. But, but the problem is the sun cannot always shine. Now, when I say sunshine, I'm not talking about the big ball of fire. I'm talking about your life. I'm telling you that every, the Bible says the, the beauty of God is, is clearly seen through his creation. Everything we need to know is seen through the creation of God. And so what that means is, just as in we cannot go, Elijah, with three and a half years without rain, even though it might be nice in the beginning, because eventually everything's going to start dying. There has to be rain sometimes. There's got to be storm clouds that roll in your life. And although they might not be welcomed, you must understand today that God uses the rainy seasons and the stormy seasons and the storm clouds to do something in your life just as much as God uses the sunshine. You've got to learn to dance in the rain just as much as you go out there and lift your hands and say, oh, what a beautiful day it is. Because rain brings life. If you have ever been in a drought for any length of time, you'll understand the grass begins to get brown. And creeks begin to dry up. Ponds begin to dry up. And then we're praying for the rain. In our own lives, sometimes we only expect God to do beautiful things. Sometimes we only want things to go well. I'm tired of things going wrong. I got news for you. It's not that things are going wrong. Sometimes it's the plan of God. He's trying to get you from one place to the other. Imagine how Elijah felt when God took him to the brook of Jerusalem. And finally the brook dries up. I'll bet you he started to question something. I bet he started to question that God brought him there and question why, why God was letting his water source dry up too. I'm the man of God, Lord. How, 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 how come my water source dries up? I'm the one trying to. Why? Because it rains on the just and the unjust. Why? Because sometimes we can't just look for the world to experience things. We have to go through things. Sometimes you've got to celebrate the storms in your life. You've got to celebrate things that don't look like they're right. And it looks like everything's going wrong. But when we get caught up in the sunshine, when we get caught up in, in, in um, materialism bringing peace and contentment into our lives, it becomes very easy to deceive us. That's right. That's right. That's 
morning I talked about Israel. Absolutely. And when it, when they got tired of waiting on Moses, what they do? They turned to their gold. Uh -huh. With their gold, they were able to make their own way. I got money, and they were able to make their own little golden calf, and, and, and they, they called it their own little god because they didn't like the dry season in their life. They didn't like that 40 days that Moses was gone up in Sinai. But I've come to tell you today that you cannot always have sunshine. Right. Your life cannot always be full of sunshine. Right. You have got to welcome uh, different seasons in your life. You say, what's the benefit of winter? Well, ask kids. They love it. Kids love the snow. Me, I hate driving in the wintertime. I feel like my mother-in-law. That's bad. But I just hate it. I'm like a basket case in the wintertime. I really am. And I get worse as I get older. The kids, oh, they love it, man. They love playing in the snow. All I can think about is shoveling the snow. So you can get out there on that way or snow blowing the snow. That's not joy to me. But they want to go outside and play in the snow. So what does the winter do to you? It brings some joy to your children. And it teaches us how, how to be a child again and enjoy the little things in life that God sends along your way. Yeah, the roads might be treacherous, but go build a snow and have a good time. What I'm saying to you is you can't get caught up in the things that are going wrong in your life. Take advantage of the little things and take that gloomy day or that snowy day and turn it into a fun day and thank God for the variety of seasons and for the change that God brings in our life. Don't always look for things to be sunny and bright because eventually everything will die. Yeah. Easier for you to say, no it's not, I walked 
I walked to church every every Sunday for an hour one way years ago when I was without a car and I was just a young man. I didn't miss a church service because I wanted to be in the house of God. I wasn't going to let anything stop me from being there. That's just the way I felt. What am I saying to you? I'm saying become determined. Don't allow the storms and, and, and the messes of your life to determine your relationship with God. If they do, then Satan will always help you create some form of obstacle. In the wintertime, I've had people come, oh, Pastor, can't come to church today. The furnace, the furnace went out. Well, my God, we got heat here. Come. We've got heat. What are you going to do? What are you going to stay home and freeze for? Well, i got to get it fixed. Come to church, be warm, then go home and fix it. I'm saying my mindset is always be, I'm not going to let anything stop me from being in the house of God. Because when I let those things that rock my life interfere with my walk with God, when I allow that to happen, I promise you a lot more is going to happen. When I allow those stormy days in my life to determine my prayer life, to determine my love for the Lord, to determine my faithfulness, to determine my commitment, when I allow that to happen, I can assure you a whole lot more of it's going to happen. That's not the way that you get yourself out of a drought. The way you get yourself out of a drought is when you learn to dance in the rain. When it's pouring rain in my life, then I'm going to worship God today. It's pouring rain in our lives, and I'm going to give God everything that I've got. It's pouring rain in our lives, and the storm just won't stop. But I'm going to stay the course, and I'm not going to let anything that's going on in my life determine my future and determine what I do tomorrow. You've got to learn to dance a little bit in the rain. Satan tries to isolate us during the storms of our life. 
Because when he does, you sit there in your room and all you do is you focus on the rain. Oh, yeah. You hear the rain beat the roof and you become more frustrated. We were building our first building. We bought prefab walls. And there were four by eight panels and four by ten in some areas of the building. And they were they were OSB on the outside and this hard, solid, six inches of solid foam in the inside and then the drywall. And uh, I was told really energy efficient. Well, that does not, it's not reflected in my electric bill and the church electric bill at all. <laughs> so we get the walls up and no roof. And I'm laying in bed with them and I hear the thunder. God, please don't let it rain. All that drywall is just standing there in the open. And then here comes the rain. I laid, I laid awake all night that night just imagining the drywall getting ruined. It just ate at me and ate at me and ate at me. There are certain times in your life, especially when you're going through a storm of your own, just, just every sign of that storm, anything that reminds you of that storm will just vex you. It'll just eat at you. It'll drive you crazy. It'll drive you over the edge. That's why if you learn to dance in the rain, dance in the middle of your storm rather than let it consume you, find somebody and invest in them during that time. Determine in your life, Elijah, I know the brook dried up. I know you don't have any water. I have a plan. I want you to go and see this little widow lady. She's about to die. I want you to bring life back into her life. Imagine her optimism. When God began to do the miracles, as the flasks just kept coming and coming, and the flower, and whatever else he did. As she had prepared her and her child for death and probably already made their funeral arrangements, Elijah, in his drought, because that drought affected him as well, in his drought, Elijah went and invested in that widow. And because of that, it brought hope to somebody else. It's okay. It's okay when, when, when you have a storm that's brewing in your own life. Mind you, God has a reason for it. And you've got to find the reason rather than let it swallow you up. Right. It's okay to determine in your life, I'm going to invest in somebody else during that time. And you'd be amazed what that will do for you. You'd be amazed how it will change your spirit, change your attitude, how it will bring a little joy back in your life. You don't just need sunshine to have joy. You don't just need a new TV or a new this or new clothes or new whatever. Sometimes you just need to learn to dance when it's raining. Here's the last thing I'm going to try to say. There's something that really bothers me about this generation of the church. We always want something new. We do. It's a, it's a spirit of our world. That's why it's a coveting. The Bible says in the last days men will be covetous. It's a, it's a spirit that drives that. And so we, 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 they, they want TVs and phones and, and we're, we're, we're into all that stuff too. You know, the next greatest phone comes out. Gotta go get it. Gotta have it. But then we get in the house of God and we always want, oh God, there he is preaching about Elijah and Ken. You know, I'm, God, give me a revelation this morning. You know, sometimes when it's raining in your life, you don't need a revelation. You just need to dance a little bit. You just need to learn to worship God. Somebody needs to remind you to worship God through the storm. And don't allow the storm to consume you and eat you up. You need to learn how to praise God no matter what's going on. Give God honor no matter Because ultimately, God's plan is still greater than the moment. And when I went through that time in my life where I was walking the church, everything had just fallen apart in my life. I was just a young man. And when I look back in that, in that, that time of my life where everything had gone wrong, I wouldn't trade it for the world because God taught me so much through that storm. He taught me so much, more than words can say. And more than teaching me, God gave me something that I talk about a lot. He gave me a testimony. 
And there's nothing more powerful than testimony. Because Sister Brenda, one day, somebody else will walk that same road that I already walked. And I can tell them, you know, you know what dawned on me today, this morning? It dawned on me, Pastor Carter, that we know that God always brought people up into those secret places, the mountaintops. He did it for Moses many times, and Elijah, and Abraham, these places of seclusion and isolation. Something dawned on me. What else was up there? What kind of wild animals, what kind of risks was their life in from man's perspective? Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. <laughs> I mean, what, what type of peril were they in while they were making their journey up to the top of the mountain to have this encounter with God? Right. Now, they might not have ever even realized it. Maybe they did. Maybe they wondered about it. What am I saying to you? I'm telling you, it will look like your life is in danger. It will look like your world is going to crumble. It will look like everything is wrong. When in actuality, everything is exactly how God planned it. And when you can walk that road, there's nothing, nothing I cherish more with our young adults, our young ladies, and our young men, being able to share with them our experience in the roads that we walked when I see them walking that same path. Yes. There's nothing. I wouldn't trade it for the world. For nothing. Because I can say to them, listen, I know it seems frightening right now. And I know it seems like everything is going to come collapsing on you. But I promise you, I promise you God will bring you through. Amen. How do you know? Because yes. I was there. Because God brought me through the same thing. I experienced the same. I had the same fears. I had the same doubts. I asked the same questions that you're asking. But God brought me through. Not only did he bring me through, but he gave me a testimony to give to you. And then I'll tell them, someday you're going to give that testimony to somebody else. Because see, I'm not going to live forever. So somebody has to carry the testimony on. We do not need we don't need a fresh new outpouring. We need a renewal of hunger for the Lord. And sometimes a drought, bless you, will do just that. A drought in your life will cause you to long for the things that you miss. Long for the days when you, when you felt excited about serving God. And whereas you think that this moment in your life is just another nail in your coffin, God is saying, no, I'm just bringing you through a drought so I can teach you to cherish the rainy seasons as well. Yes. Would you stand with me? God. 
Remind us how to dance in the rainy season. Remind us, God, how to embrace the storm as much as we long for the sunshine. Because God works in all of it and through all of it. And I assure you, God will make you a better person. And He'll give you a testimony when He finishes with whatever you are experiencing in your life.
So I went to my office and I was getting ready. And the Lord spoke to me. He always has a way of getting you in those moments. And the Lord said, what do you tell your church to do during the worst storms of your life? Well, I knew the answer. I tell them to worship God. Okay, why are you sitting in your office? So I went outside. Or I'm sorry, I went out of my office. I went to the sanctuary. And I worshiped with tears in my eyes, rolled down my cheeks. But I, I, I gave God my all that day. And not only did God, did he bring me through it that day? No, no. It, the storm lasted for a while, but he brought me through, gave me another testimony. And I want to tell somebody today, I want to tell somebody, if you learn to worship God during the worst storms of your life, you'll teach yourself to do that. You will see that it will carry you and it will sustain you. You'll see how important it is offering a sacrifice of praise. You might not, you're not always going to be excited about lifting your hands or calling upon the Lord. It can be a sacrifice. But God honors sacrifice. Amen. Let's sing it one more time to you.